Hey everybody, welcome back. It is Market Mondays as always. We are here at this time on this channel, I say it every single broadcast. Always glad to have you guys. I know you are going to be piling in as we are going along in the live broadcast today as well. There's a bunch of you. There's always a bunch of you that are going to come and join us on the live broadcast afterwards. So welcome to those who are joining us live and hello to you who are joining us after the fact on the live broadcast. No matter what group you're in, I believe that you're going to get something out of this. In fact, as I was preparing for this session today, I had a distinct feeling, a sense in my just my, my mind, my heart that like, you know, this this stuff that we're teaching, this is something that not a lot of people not it's true. Not a lot of people take the time to really learn about their finances in general, even just household finances. You know that on average, it's not it's not abnormal for somebody to not even really look at their finances when they're making major purchases. I mean, just even something as basic as that. Having a, a concern and an investment in your own finances is such a huge thing. And this this is really, really important. So as a, I, again, as I was preparing today, I thought, you know what? There's going to be some stuff we learned today, this series as a whole. If this is new to you, this is game changer stuff. Okay. This literally is game changer stuff. And I would say it's stuff that most people don't know. And unless trends change significantly, it's going to be stuff that they won't know. Not just that they don't, but that they won't know. Not because people can't understand it. Not because it's inaccessible, but because one, you, me, us, we have to take the care and the time to say, I want to invest in my financial future. I just want to learn about money. And if you're like me, you know, the way you were brought up or even in your, your early adult life, you maybe didn't have a lot of training on finances in general. Maybe you did have some more. And I think there's going to be something today for both of us, okay, both of those groups. So that said, let's go ahead and jump into the session, okay? So really, we've been talking about protecting your money. We looked at protecting your money in a bear market crash. What are some of the things that I feel at Tradeway we feel that you can do, that you could do, and in many cases that you should do, okay? Uh, it's different things for different people, different situations, but by and large, that's what we looked at. And there's a lot of ideas in there. And there's one in particular that I touched on last time that I want to go into in more detail today. And I think for many of you, this is going to be a new concept. If you've heard of it before, it will probably be a little deeper into that. And for some of our more advanced folks, we are going to show a specific example today that if you have heard of this, uh, you can see a little bit of how we approach it. So I think, again, there's something there for everybody. But here's what I want to help you do. I want to expand what you are doing right here, what you are able to perceive right here, what you're able to think is possible right here. That's what today's session is all about. What are the potential earning opportunities in a bear market. Now, we talked a lot about a bear market last time we were on together. And one thing I wanted you to understand was how to protect. But we mentioned as well, Jeffrey, I see you there. Susan, I see you there. Welcome, guys. Glad to have you. Thank you for throwing a comment and reminding me, actually, that those of you who are joining us, please go ahead, throw a comment as you are joining us on the broadcast, right there in the comments section, let me know who you are, where you're from. And then as we go along in the broadcast as well, it is very helpful for me to hear from you. If you should have any questions about what I'm saying, I would love to interact with you. It is a greater desire for me as a host on this program to interact with you and answer any questions you might have than it is to necessarily uh, do these sessions alone. Definitely want to go through this information because, again, I really do have a belief and conviction that it is going to help you.
by upgrading, again, the way we think and what we think is possible. So back to this bear market piece, learning to protect our money in the bear market, but I mentioned learning to earn, right? Learn to earn in the bear market, that there are actually ways that we can earn in a bear market. There are potential setups there. And I'm going to go over that in more detail today. So not only do I want to lay a foundation for you in this series that says you don't have to fear a bear, mar bear market. You don't have to feel powerless in a bear market. You don't have to based on trends and doctrines of the financial industry. You do not have to lose massive amounts of your hard-earned and invested money and profits in your invested money just because when a bear market crash comes, there's nothing you can do but ride it all the way into the dirt and then let it come back from there. And we covered that in the last session. So if you have not seen that session, if you haven't joined us for that, I highly recommend that you jump back there, watch that session, if you're here with us today already, don't go anywhere. This is going to be good. You will be able to understand this as a standalone, but I think it's really important and powerful if you also go back and watch our material from last week and then add this onto that. Okay, so uh, Kassen, I don't know if it's Kassen or Kaysen. I've seen you multiple times. Howdy to you as well. It's interesting. I found myself walking into rooms and saying hello to people a lot lately, lately and I, I always seem to say howdy now so my time in Texas I guess has served its purpose I have uh, have definitely taken that with me to the west coast howdy is a normal thing for me to so howdy to you too sir and everybody else on here so yes go back and watch that broadcast if you haven't but but I want you to get this okay cash is a position meaning if I don't have all my money exposed in the stock market, but I have it in cash or a cash equivalent or close to cash, for some of us, we have a 401k, we have different retirement accounts and vehicles, and it's not as easy or even possible at times for us to just immediately go to our all cash position, meaning we don't have stock exposure, okay? But we do have equivalents and close to options okay and then that will change depending on each individual situation but again that's some of the options that we talked about for protecting your money but i want you to understand cash itself or that cash equivalent or close to that itself is a position in the market as as investors and traders and at tradeway we teach the difference today it's not important that we go into that distinction so much but for both investors and traders we need to understand cash is a position. It is something that is actually beneficial to us. And in times where the market is dropping, shrinking, contracting, protecting money, that is at times the most beneficial and aggressive move that we can do or, or beneficial move that we can do. So it is a position. But as we are in that environment, what are the, some of these things, Blair, that you're talking about that I could use to potentially increase my account size, my retirement income, when it's going down, okay? And I know we have a, a varied group of people on here today, as I said at the top, where you have different experience levels, even just with different market concepts. Uh, and you, so you're at different places when I say that, but let me go ahead and start from the beginning. So if you could make money when the stock market is moving down how would that work well i would start out by saying this if i haven't said it already clear enough you absolutely have opportunities to make money and honestly once you learn the skill sets in a bear market you have almost if not as many opportunities to make money while the stocks are going down as you would normally have when stocks are going up in a bull market. Remember that a bull market is when stocks are going up and a bear market is when stocks have moved down more than 20% from
from the recent high, okay? 20% bear market. That means the bears or the sellers are in control of the market, and it is what we just saw this last spring. So not only did Tradeway students have the skill sets to get out of the market, before it reached the bottom, before they gave back everything or a, a major percentage rather of what they had earned, but they also had skill sets that enabled them to, to see opportunities, potential opportunities for making money when the stocks were going down. And that is a game changer. This is what I'm going back to. Remember, game changer. People who know how to use money well. I'm learning this more and more and more, guys. I said this from when we from when we started. You know, I did not grow up in this environment. And I understand that, you know, some, sometimes with trading and investing, you know, we might want to learn from somebody who's been a financial shark their entire life. Well, I can tell you right now, I was in the music industry. I had six. Success in that. I moved into the ministry. I went all over the world. I got to do amazing things. But my journey, my journey has been one of just trying to humbly walk with Jesus from when I got saved at 21 years old and let him teach me about the kingdom of God. And eventually he began to show me that there was something for me to learn in the kingdom of God more than just saving and giving. Now I feel like he gave me a solid foundation where I understand money's not my God, money's not my source, money's not my ultimate security. It's not to be an idol in my life, but he took me on a journey when those things, those, those core values were established so that he could show me how to be wise, right? Wise as serpents, but innocent as a dove. And so I have gone on a journey with this stuff, this mindset. That I think for some of you, many of you, and this has certainly been true of my experience with thousands of tradeway students, that it can be more beneficial and more helpful for you to hear from somebody who has gone on that journey and saw firsthand how as you add these layers of what is possible and you learn from people who know how to do it, it can completely transform the way you think and act around money. And when you change how you think and act around money, money starts to change how it acts around you. That is true. That is 100% true. So I want to talk specifically about that and get into the meat of it now. We're going to do some like actual meat of some trading stuff today. Okay. So I hope you're excited about that. This is the kind of stuff that I love because it's the practicals that moves us towards the goals that we have. So really, there are basically two ways, okay? There are two ways. I see some more comments there. Martha, welcome. Uh, I'm sorry, I jump into the comments, I lose my train of thought, but I wanna make sure to say hi to everybody. Uh, there are two ways that you can do this, okay? Making money, and we are gonna look at a chart here before we're done. So there are two ways, okay? So the first way, you may have heard of this, it is what we call shorting stocks, shorting the stock. Now, I mentioned last time, okay, I mentioned it in brief, but I didn't go into it in detail. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail today because I want to present to you two ways, and I want you to understand why we at Tradeway always avoid the first way, but we routinely use the second way in a bear Market. Number one, shorting stocks. So you may have heard the term, what is shorting a stock? Okay, so here's the basic concept of this. Now, you have the benefit. This is on video. This is recorded for some of you. If this is a bit confusing because it's a very new concept, it's okay. You can always pause this recording. You can go back. You can rewatch it. You'll be able to get the concept that way. So if you don't catch it all right now, that's okay. I'm going to try and go very slow, very specific here for you so you can get this concept. Shorting stocks, if you think of it like this, okay, we are not going to try and make money from the stock going up. We're going to try and make money from the stock going down. So instantly, right there, we have to start to think a little bit different. 
the stock is going to go down. And if it does, our account is going to go up. How does that happen? How could that possibly work? Well, think of it this way. Let's leave stocks aside for a moment and just use something common household item that we all have. Let's just say our phone, an iPhone, an Android, whatever it is you use, but you've got a phone, okay? Everybody's got a phone. Now imagine this, okay? Imagine, let's just take some names. We've got some folks on here. So Jeffrey, Jeffrey's on the broadcast today. Susan is also on the broadcast today. So Jeffrey and Susan, let's just say Jeffrey wants to make money as a market is going down. Now, in this case, we're talking about the phone market. Okay, let's just use an everyday example. So what he's going to do is he's going to go, you know what? I really think that the price of the iPhone is going to drop significantly. Maybe some really bad news. Maybe maybe there's there's a rumor that the iPhone hardware is not as reliable as they say it is. I'm just being facetious here, right? But he gets wind or has a technical reason for why the value of the iPhone would drop. But he doesn't currently own an iPhone. So what is he going to do? He's going to borrow an iPhone, okay? He's going to borrow an iPhone from Susan. He's not going to pay her for it yet. He's just going to borrow that phone. And then he's going to sell it to Blair. He's going to sell it to me for $100. Let's just use easy numbers today, okay, so we can understand the concept. He sells it to me for $100, which is the current market price for an iPhone. Don't we all wish that was true, right? $100. So he sells it to me. I now have the phone. He has $100 in his pocket, okay? The price of the iPhone, let's say the reason he thought it was going to go down comes true. And the price of the iPhone drops in two days to $80. It's no longer market price going for $100. Nobody would pay $100 for an iPhone anymore. They would only pay $80. How much did he get for that iPhone that he sold to me? He got a hundred bucks for that thing. So what can he do now? Well, Susan still needs her phone back. So he buys back the iPhone from me for $80. Okay. Some of you already have a question. Why would I do that? Let's come back to that. He buys back the iPhone from me for $80. Did he pay less than he got for it? He did. He paid less. So now what does he do? He now has the phone again. He owes Susan a phone. Remember, he just borrowed it from her. He didn't buy it from her. So he gives Susan back her phone, and he spent $80 to get it back from Blair, which leaves him with $20. The price of the phone went down, and he was able to pocket $20 of that 100 which is not a bad percentage if you think about it, right? Not a bad percentage at all. That is the exact same concept of shorting stocks. Now, I know there are questions saying, well, why would Susan lend him the phone? Or why would anybody lend you the stock? Uh, why would I buy back or sell that phone for a lesser price? So all we need to know at this stage of the game is that in the stock market, this is what's so beautiful about it, there are always buyers and sellers. So they will always buy and sell. Your broker can find somebody to borrow that stock from. I use that term borrow loosely, right? We're just looking at the first layer of how this works. But this really is how it works. You're going to borrow that stock and you're going to be able to go through the whole process. Remember that I said, if that was a little bit confusing for you, you can go back and you can watch it again. But I ultimately... I sold something so that I could buy it back at a lesser price and keep the difference, pocket the money. But now this is crucial. Let's say the phone didn't go down in price like I thought it would. Instead of going down to 80, it went up to 150. Turns out the news comes out and says, oh man, 
the construction of this iPhone, it's way better than we ever thought it was. It's solid. These things will last forever. It doesn't go down. It goes up. Jeffrey still has to get Susan her phone back. But when he goes to buy it back from me, it's no longer going to be $80. He's got to pay $150 to get that phone back. He sold a phone that doesn't actually belong to him. He has to buy it back. So he does so at $150. He now takes a $50 loss, right? He pays an extra $50 to get it back. Susan then gets her phone back, and he's out $50. Here's the piece I want you to understand. How high can a stock go? Play the Jeopardy music. Infinite. Right? Obvious. Obvious question, obvious answer. Infinite. If you buy a stock, buying stock, wanting it to go up, not shorting, you're just buying like we normally do, right? It can go down, but only to zero. So if you put $100 into a stock trade and it goes to zero, let's say you're in a bear market, how far down can your retirement go? Well, theoretically, Zero. That's as far as it can go. But it's not going to go negative. You may lose everything in it, which of course we would never want you to do, but you could lose everything in it theoretically if you left it in there and every company went out of business. Unlikely, but possible. Whereas if you short stocks, remember the iPhone example, if it goes against you, it can go infinite. So the risk in shorting stocks is extremely large. And this is why for 99% of those that are on the broadcast today, maybe not everybody, but most of us, your broker, the one with whom you actually trade or invest, they're not even going to allow you to do this unless you have certain experience levels and certain capital requirements in your account because the risk is so high. You could end up spending much more than you uh, than you intended because it can just continue to go up. So that said, what is something else that we can do that is safer if I would like to make money? Blair, you keep saying you could potentially make money when the market is going down. How can I do this? Well, you could use options. So we're going to give an options preview today, a, a little bit of an options preview, just on puts. I want you to understand this. So an alternative is options, okay? So you, you can purchase a contract. This is, this is as far into the actual option I'm going to go today. You can purchase a contract. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen really quick for you guys here. Because I want you to be able to see this. Okay, got muted there for a sec. I want you to be able to see this chart here. Oh. So I'll go over here. Now you can see this chart here. So this is the market as we saw it in this crash here in the, in the, in the spring. Um, so what we can do is we can use what's called an option. Okay, now an option specifically is not the stock itself. Okay. The option is actually a contract that is tied to the stock. So when you learn to trade stocks with us, without knowing it in a way, you're actually learning to trade the option because you're going to buy and sell the option at the same time you buy and sell the stock. 
Now, again, we're not going to go totally into the uh, very specific pieces of how to trade an option. That is Tradeway's option course. But what I want you to understand is the cool thing about options is that you can only, if you purchase an option, you can only lose what you put into it, but it will increase in value as the stock market moves down. So the put option, there are two kinds of options, okay? Remember I said there's gonna be some new and exciting stuff for you guys today of opportunities that you can use. There are two kinds of options. One is a call option, and that increases in value as the stock market moves up, okay? And the put option, which increases in value as it moves down. Worth talking about put options today, okay? Put options. So if you look, got a little bit of noise in the background here. Okay, hopefully you guys are still with me. Looks like we're having a little bit of technical issues here on the sound. So you are joining me right next to the ocean here in beautiful San Pedro, California. Hopefully we can keep that going here. I can still see most of you guys are still with us. So I definitely want to get you this information. We're getting right to the meat of uh, what I want to show you here. So I'm going to go back to my screen. Make sure you can see that. Okay, good. Got that back. Okay, so we're back to the screen here. So again, we're not going to go into the absolute specifics of what makes an option an option. That is what we teach in the course. But what I do want you to understand, again, is this option increases in value as the stock goes down. That's how it works. That is how it works. And what I want you to get today isn't, well, wait, Blair, how does that work? Because we can and do go into that in the course material. But what I want you to understand is that there is a choice, an option, if you will, to actually begin to think, I actually have potentially profitable opportunities when stocks are moving down. And guess what? I mentioned this a little bit already. We use the same rules 
when it's going down that we use when it's going up. And that gets in to what we do in the trade way system. Now, I want to show you this because this on the screen, this is the chart of the S&P 500, which is an index of 500 companies across sectors in the U.S. economy that give us an idea of just how things are going. At Tradeway, we look at this every day, okay, and we refer to it as the market itself. So I just want you to look, you know, I've got these two lines on here. Really what they are is averages, okay? They're just averages. So right back here, you see where my cursor is. This is where the stock began to drop, the stock market, okay? We started seeing the corona and oil. If you remember, it was really both at first. It was corona and oil that began to just really tank the market. But it was, of course, corona that really took over. So it drops all the way down, and then it gets back up to this line, and it tries to stay above it, and then we saw another huge move down. Very fast, very fast drop. But then look what starts to happen. It moves up into the area of that average, and then it drops. Back up into the area of that average, and then it drops. Back up into the same area. You say, well, Blair, it didn't exactly touch it every time. No, it didn't hit. It doesn't exactly touch it every single time. And a lot of the times, what we call support and resistance, which we're going to talk more about next week, it's not an exact point as much as it is an area, and we'll show you how to identify those areas. But what I wanna show you on this chart is back down again, right up to that line, very, very close. Back down again, goes down again, and then the next day, it doesn't even stop there, right? It blasts right through it, and that's where we really start to get our recovery. We make a higher low, and then off we go. Remember I said this, I mentioned this already. This is a candlestick that we would have paid attention to, but that was on a previous broadcast. There are consistencies in this movement down, just even from a technical perspective, that tell us that there are opportunities that we can learn to identify, but we would have to, A, we'd have to short them, B, we'd have to just stay away from them in general, or C, we would be able to use a put option. So that opens up a world of possibilities. So when I said learn to earn, one of those ways is utilizing put options. And at Tradeway, we have multiple subscription programs you can get into. Every single month, you've got access to training that will specifically teach you how we do stocks, the foundation of everything we do, but also what is an option, how to trade an option, and begin to feel like you're learning for earning when things are moving down. And again, imagine this, you're in a bear market or you're coming into a bear market or we know that bear markets, they just happen. I've said this multiple times, they just happen. So it doesn't matter how long a bear or bull market rather goes, we know that eventually a bear market is going to occur. So we don't want you to be afraid. We want you to be prepared. We want you to be confident. Last week's session was how to preserve. This week's session is just opening the door to thinking in a new way of how could I learn to earn as well as protect what I have. And tens of thousands of Tradeway students have been on that track now because we not only teach you the possibilities and potentials when it's moving up, but also the possibilities and potentials of when it is moving down, okay? So that said, that is learning to earn in a bear market and the possibilities and potentials of put options, options in general have incredible leverage. We tend to pay, in almost all cases, significantly less for an option than we pay for the stock itself. So for a lot of folks, that is a huge benefit as well because you may not have a large account to start trading with, start investing with. You may have a retirement account and you are only gonna use a very, very small part of that account if you wanted to do some active 
trading. Well, options could be a good option for you, but they also have unique parts. They also have unique risks. So we teach you how to manage those. David Mitchell has a system specifically for choosing the best options and doing them correctly. So this is just a doorway, but we want to give you a doorway into a new way at Tradeway and put options is one of the ways you can do that. As always, I will be checking the comments afterwards. So if you've got any questions afterwards, go ahead, continue even after this broadcast is done, put them in the comment section. I will be coming, I will be checking those. What do you think about all this? Tell me where you're at, tell me what you wanna learn. And I am definitely taking submissions. What are the kinds of things that you guys wanna see on here, see more of, and lastly, Wednesday at the same time, we'll be coming back for our Keys to Breakthrough series. Wisdom Wednesdays, we're doing the Key to Breakthrough series. I am excited to give you this week's key. And you can also go back if you haven't and look at what we've covered so far. We want to get you financial breakthrough, but we also want to equip you for breakthrough in any area, every area of your life. And that is what that is all about. So with that said, I will sign off and we will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for joining today, sticking with us, and we'll see you next time next week.